This seismic reflection profile comes from offshore Namibia and it shows some pretty spectacular structures. So let's have a go at interpreting it. We're going to alternate between picking stratal reflectors and fault traces and then we're going to interpret uh, the full fault traces in other words how they link together. And to make sure we're on the right track we'll compare our interpretation with some idealised models and we'll use the regional concept. Incidentally this image is on the virtual seismic atlas along with the worked interpretation here. So it's available to look at at your leisure. Okay, so let's get going. So let's start off by picking some stratal reflectors around these three picked horizons as a green, blue and mauve. Okay, so there we've got the continuity of the reflectors about as far as we can push it to the right and it, they seem to terminate against some kind of structure and repeat with offset into these positions over here. So we would probably want to put a fault in and there's even a hint of a fault plane reflection coming down through here. So we've got a faulty contact but clearly the blue and mauve horizons are also offset so the fault must continue down into the subsurface like this. Now we need to tidy up our interpretation and snap those reflectors in the hanging wall, that's to the right hand side of the fault, snap the stratal reflectors onto the fault like this. Okay, now the mauve horizon has returned to more or less the same orientation and elevation as it is in the foot wall. So presumably the fault structure continues beneath like this. So the fault follows a ramp flat geometry. It's a thrust fault because the hanging wall has moved up relative to the foot wall. There's the regional for horizon A, the mauve horizon, and we can see that where the thrust goes flat, in other words, parallel to the strata, the strata are back at regional. In other words, they line up with the foot wall. And the purple horizon has moved up relative to its regional, confirming the idea that the fault is a thrust. Also notice that the mobile horizon in the foot wall to the thrust we've picked so far also begins to move above regional as we move away from the thrust fault that we have identified. So if the rocks on the left have been moved up a bit above their regional, then presumably there's another fault that comes over to the left. So this section's elevated, so we would infer that there's another thrust that comes through something like this. And again, we can snap the blue and put uh, mauve horizons down onto the fault planes like this. So we've identified two fault structures so far, and we're showing them linking at depth onto a common detachment horizon or floor thrust. We can follow the same approach now and just push it through to the right. So let's just see where we go if we do that. And you'll see we've got an array of thrust faults that are climbing off that common floor thrust, the major detachment at the base, repeating the stratigraphy several times. Each one of these splays is a thrust in its own right, repeating stratigraphy, carrying older rocks on top of younger, moving the hanging wall up relative to the foot wall. And we've added half arrows to show this interpretation, giving the sense of movement on all the faults. Incidentally, this big horizon at the top is not a roof thrust, but is actually a major unconformity surface, which seals stratigraphically the structures below. So it's a post-kinematic unconformity, and the rocks above are undeformed by these thrust systems. So let's compare the thrust system here with an idealised imbricate fan. So in this idealised model, again, we've got a series of thrusts that climb off a common detachment or floor thrust. Let's explore what the strata do relative to their regionals. So we'll start off by constructing the regional for the base of the light green unit that lies in the middle of our stratigraphic pile here. There it is. And notice that where the light green package comes back down to its regional again, the underlying floor thrust is flat. Now let's construct the regional for the top of this light green package. There it goes. And for the top of the dark green package, there. So three regionals for each for these different stratigraphic horizons. You'll see what the act of thrusting does is it just pulls rocks up and away from their regional. So if you want to find how far down in a thrust package 
particular horizons penetrate, then we just need to construct their regionals, and in this idealised representation, the rocks don't go down below their own regional. OK, let's take this understanding and go back to the seismic. So there are the regionals for the green, the blue and the mauve horizons. And you can see that the training edge of each imbricate thrust slice, in other words the footwall ramp, lines up to define the regionals. It's a really useful check to see that the interpretation is making geometric sense. So there's our interpretation of our thrust system from offshore Namibia. We alternated between picking stratal reflectors and fault traces. We interpreted the full fault traces and in doing so identified the position of the floor thrust, so the imbricate system. And we compared with idealised thrust system models using the regional concepts to check that our interpretation made geometric sense. As I said at the outset, you can see this image and the work solution at your leisure on the Virtual Seismic Atlas.